Hey friends, tonight we are going to be dining at Victoria and Albert's here at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. And I am so excited. This is the fanciest restaurant here at Walt Disney World. It has five diamonds and five stars in all the major categories from travel networks. And uh, it's very expensive and pricey. And I've always wanted to eat here. And tonight's going to be my very first time. So I wanted to make a little video to show you guys. We're gonna eat some food, drink some wine, and have a fancy Victoria and Albert's kind of night. Anywho's, let's go do this. Here it is, Disney's Grand Floridian Resort, and this is where the restaurant is, Victoria and Albert's. A part of uh, getting a reservation here, uh, valet parking is included with it, so you get free valet parking if you plan on coming to this restaurant. Kind of fancy. This is such a bucket list item for me. And it's not something like a lot of people get the chance or opportunity to do. So I'm very thankful that I'm even here in this predicament where I can experience this and make a video for you. And it's a very hard to get reservation. In fact, it's probably the hardest to get reservation in Walt Disney World. Uh, dates come available every 60 days. And I had to wake up at exactly like 5 a.m. And I was there at 6 a.m. to get the reservation. and. Uh, uh, it was gone within minutes so I was lucky enough and there's only like under 20 tables allowed per day like per day you know what I mean in each dining room and we'll get to all the details about everything a little bit later in the video but it's safe to say for two people it's gonna cost you around a thousand dollars to eat at Victoria and Albert's Disney's Grand Floridian Resort would have the most luxurious uh, restaurant in Walt Disney World. It's so beautiful in here. The piano, when they're playing down here, it's so nice. And I think we're going to make our way up to the second floor. That's where the restaurant is. I just love being here, though. It's so elegant and it really transforms us to a different time. Fancier time. Like I mentioned, I've always wanted to come and dine at this restaurant, but I've kind of been afraid to come and I get anxiety uh, being in environments that I really don't know anything about. You know what I mean? I'm not a very adventurous eater. I eat foods very plain, uh, but at least I'm coming with some friends that, you know, they have a little bit of maybe a, uh, an expanded palate and I'm always eager to learn things like, uh, you know what I mean? I've never experienced something like this before. So I can't tell you what it's going to be like until I do it. You know what I mean? And uh, that's also a reason why I want to come and experience this. Because I think after this, I can officially say I've eaten at every single restaurant in Walt Disney World. You know what I mean? So I hope you guys enjoy it. And also, please forgive me if I don't know what I'm talking about. Because like I, like I said, I, 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 it's hard for me to pronounce words. I don't know what fork to use. And I'm just a just a regular guy here with a Steamboat Millie, uh, Mickey hat on. At least I got some good friends, some friends to help me. Here are my friends for this evening. Kristen, right down Main Street. Sean, Vic. Mr. Planters, Mr. Peanut. I'm, I'm Mr. I'm or you're Mr. Monopoly. He's outdoing all yeah, of us. I know. Here. This man, I mean, when we found out we were coming to Victoria and Albert's, there was, it was no question what Sean was going to be wearing. The top hat, the cane, the suit with the tail. I mean, it, of course, it had to be done. Like I mentioned, there's a dress code uh, that is strictly enforced. No, you know, ball caps. I'm going to probably check that when I get in there. But if you have any questions, I'll put a link in the description and it'll take you to the uh, Know Before You Go by Walt Disney World. They'll have the exact specs, price, and policies just so you can reference them. Because, uh, like I said, maybe a lot of people might want to watch this video to see what it's like to actually come dine at a restaurant like this or Victorian Alberts. You know what I mean? The, 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 the top tier restaurant here at Walt Disney World. Maria and Chris from Lake Buena Visitors is also going to be joining us too. We are. are we, first time? Your first time, yeah. right? First time. We've been trying for like 10 years, yes. never able to get a reservation. And yeah. we the same yeah. reservation on the same, same day. Well, that's because of the 60, is it yeah, 60 days? 60 days. Yeah, yeah. because uh, so once uh, the, the day opened, yep. yeah, I was up at like 5 a.m. So we just happened to get up at the same yeah. time, at the same day. And, Great minds think alike. And pick, hey, let's go to Great, yeah. let's yeah. go to Victoria. Albert's today, Nate. 
There are three different dining rooms here at Victoria and Albert's. They have the regular dining room and then they have Queen Victoria's room. And then they have the chef's table, which is a private table in the kitchen. And they all vary on menu and prices. The, uh, the regular dining room where we're going to be eating tonight is just around $295 per person. And then it goes to like $375 for the Queen Victoria's room. And there's only four couples in there a night. So it's a very quiet, quiet setting. And then it's about $500 a person for the chef's table. And that's all, you, I mean, for you and your party, you're just in the kitchen talking one-on-one -on -one with the chef. And uh, I, I think it's really cool. And I know some people might think it could be expensive, but this is like a five to six hour event. Like you're in there for a long time and it's an experience more than just a meal. I know people that spend more money on Taylor Swift concerts and not saying that's not a bad thing either, but uh, you know, it depends on what you can do and how much it costs to entertain you for a night and uh, tonight I'm kind of excited to experience it do something uh, I've never done before inside Disney's Grand Floridian you have the main lobby with the piano player and it's very fancy and on the second floor you have Victoria and Albert's right up here very very fancy walking through here I like the rug and the carpet a little foyer. <laughs> yeah, very, very fancy. And as you can see right up there, Forbes uh, Travel Guy, Victorian Alberts verified as one of the finest properties in the world, 2023. Five diamond. Oh yeah, For, Five. since 2000, every year since 2000, I think. This? I looked this up, I got all the info. Very <laughs> fancy. We are gonna be using very small cameras and microphones while we are in the restaurant. So it may sound loud, uh, but we're probably just gonna be talking in our normal voices and you're gonna be able to hear, you know, everyone at the table, even uh, the uh, cast members that are gonna be taking care of us because of these little mics. And the cameras that we have are no bigger than a cell phone. Uh, they don't have a big lens. It's very, very discreet. And I think it's perfect for this setting because I didn't know how to approach that you know what I mean because it's a very intimate setting and I don't want to be a disruption to anybody else so for the most part we're going to be very quiet low-key with some fancy equipment and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy Thank you. Welcome drink from our zero proof pairing this evening. This is going to be a warm apple cider. It's made with two different kinds of apples, some Chinese dates, a little bit of clove and cinnamon, but its main purpose is to help open up your appetite for the evening. Thank you. Cheers. Please enjoy. Oh. It tastes like Christmas, honestly. I thought it was, I honestly thought it was gonna be coffee, but I guess it's not. Thank you. It's so delicious. That is so good. The service so far has been exceptional. They escort you to the table if you have to get up to use the restroom. They escort you to the restroom. They tuck you into the table like a little blankie. They tuck you in. Uh, they put napkins on your lap. It's very, very fancy. And uh, like I said, it, this is gonna be several hours, so I'll be in and out, kind of highlighting some of the things, but I don't wanna talk too much. You know what I mean? You'll hear us talking, but mostly it's because the mics we're gonna have actually on the table so it's gonna pick up a lot uh, but for the most part uh, you know just gonna kind of show and let you guys see it all for yourselves Mr. Morrow? Wow thank you my pleasure this is very cool so please feel free at your convenience uh, to open your invitations to dine inside the envelopes tonight you will find your choice of two menus the first menu you'll see is listed as our dining room menu which is historically served to the 12 tables here in our main dining room. The second menu is our chef's degustation, or chef's tasting menu, historically served in the Queen Victoria room and also the chef's table. Tonight, Chef Matthew's extending the invitation to enhance to the entire dining room, so you'll have your option 
of either menu to choose tonight. The chef's menu will include two additional courses, which is the main difference between the menus. Uh, the first additional course, flown in fresh from off the coast of North Fork, Long Island, is a beautiful fillet of wild striped bass, uh, butter poached and served with a uh, brioche carabinero prawn toast in a beautiful aromatic uh, Eastern Asian lobster sauce. Uh, then the second additional course on the chef's menu is the Miyazaki A5. This is the imported Japanese Wagyu beef coming from the Miyazaki Prefecture on the southernmost island of mainland Japan, a region known for farming uh, cattle for over 400 years. Going back to meet the chef. It's so oh, wow. pretty. Thank you. Beautiful, thank you. For every course has contained a menu. Uh, we also change a welcome thing for every single uh, Wow. So this is uh, the first group. This is amazing. Well, cheers. 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 Amazing. Thank you. Do you want to take a picture with Chef? I yes. Right. Thank you. I don't know if we sit with Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, I'll have you. Um, I'm so excited home. for dinner. Thank you. <laughs> So far, everything has been exceptional, and I can't believe we got our own custom menus, and we're also going to be able to eat uh, or dine off of the chef's menu uh, from the chef's table, uh, but it is $395. and I think $95. The price is on the bottom there, uh, but I'm doing it. I think most of us are doing it. Some of us are doing the wine pairing, uh, but I'm just honored, and we got to go to the back of the kitchen. Like, this is beyond, like, <laughs> I've never experienced anything like this and when I said it's probably gonna be the most fanciest menu or fanciest dining experience uh, It definitely is like already Seltzer to the cocktail to customize to your liking. Oh, and starting with a few small bites. Our chef has designed these bites to be enjoyed using your natural utensils. So we are actually going to bring some warm towels so that you can tidy your fingers afterwards. So if we start to the left, we are going to have a New Zealand langoustine tartlet. Inside of a crispy flea rick tartlet shell, you're going to find some grilled langoustine along with an avocado violi. Along the top, you're going to have a carrot and mandarin veil. If we move into the center, everyone is going to have a Danish pastry called an evil skewer. This one has been produced using some sweet potato. Everyone is going to find some preserved persimmon puree. And then four of you are going to have a Lomo Iberico on the, hop, the top. For four of you, we will have a venison carpaccio sandwich. This reminds me of like the three shell method from Demolition Man. You ever see that movie? The Demolition Man. Yeah, you know, he's like, you don't know how to use the you three don't know shells. How to use the three shells. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Left to right. So, any this is pretty good. I don't know. <laughs> kind of tastes like guacamole and chips. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty shocked that the first two things I've eaten, I had no idea what they were, and I was so nervous. Ended up being amazing. Yeah, I don't know what that was, but it was good. I'm worried that this is gonna ruin the streak for me. Mini ice cream looking sandwich. The mini ice cream looking sandwich. <laughs>
And this is coming from an area called the Montenegro Rems, which is a very uh, hilly and fertile region just to the south and west of the capital city. Uh, this is a region uh, that's famous for growing the Pinot Noir used in some of the uh, most exceptional wines um, in the world, Dom Perignon. Sorry? I love that one. So they actually uh, grow Pinot Noir, uh, Chardonnay, and Pinot Meunier all in Champagne, and those are the three building blocks of, uh, of Champagne. I found a nice little corner over here, uh, so whenever I step out, you know, I'm just going to give you guys a quick recap. If not, I'm just letting the camera roll and catching just, you know, our discussion with the servers and stuff like that. I really don't want to dive into specifics or anything like that, so mostly when I'm talking, I'm either talking to other people sitting at the table and not talking talking to the camera, just kind of listening. I've been taking it all in a lot. The music is kind of beautiful, and I love the sparkling water. Like, I love how you got fancy water. I wish it had the really cool water, the uh, the uh, Salbarte, I think it is. It's like glacier water, but they don't have any. They're out of stock. It's okay, I got some at home, though. There it is, the Vice Canta Catalan. Fancy sparkling water here. I've never seen anything like that. So me and they got a pairing. Thank you. Here is the Vichy Cockworm for you, coming to us from Spain. Mm. Yeah. Fancy water for Spain, from Spain, for our feet at the end. The Spain was... <laughs> If you wanted to taste it, just to make sure that it was here, like it. You want to get something different? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Beautiful. Do you like it? I love it. Bubbly okay. blessed. The caviar has arrived. And we have for you the Royal Belgian Ostetra caviar. You're finding it laid over top of a parsnip puree. Four of you are going to find some smoked bone marrow along with that parsnip puree. Now the majority of our produce comes to us from here in Ohio from Farmer Lee Jones's Garden Call. I feel like I'm going to make a movie. It's like a, it's like a Star Wars plate or something. Yeah. Look at this. I've never had caviar like this before. No, I'm dipping it Thank you. like chips and guac or salsa. And then you got bone marrow underneath there with a parsnip. A lot going on. But it tastes really good. How do I eat this? Just with like a little cookie? Brewed a green tea. This is a sencha uh, green tea called uh, Fukujika Chen. Uh, we then infuse it with the juice of strawberries, top it with the foam of matcha, and then this is a dehydrated shiso leaf. If you're unfamiliar, shiso is a Japanese herb with the flavors of mint and basil. You know what I thought he said? That's more than Wow. Cheese. Oh, I thought he said foam. But we have it now, though. You're welcome to it. It's technically the pairing with the course. You're welcome to enjoy it now. Have a little sip. That is delicious. But also enjoy it with the course. Wow. Definitely. Wow. Uh, this is a the menu itself has everything laid out and honestly I, I can't understand like I, I some of the uh, you know words that they use to describe the food I really don't understand uh, so I'm just like going at it and the first two things that I bet I was like I have no idea what this is it was just presented to me and I took a bite and I loved it first one I was like wow and I'll put a list of, like the menu I'll show you you've seen a little bit of the menu but uh, I'm like, wow, holy moly, like, I was so afraid. And then I was like, this is really nice. And then we got to the third thing. It wasn't that great, but you know what I mean? Like there's gonna be some things I like and some things I don't like because I, I you know what I mean? I've never, I don't eat, you know, fancy stuff. It's gonna be exciting when I get to the quail. I wanna try the quail. I like quail, I think. How is it? We need either one. 
Crab's good. Crab's good. You see, you got the crab in there. At first, I thought it was like a corn soup. But this is a hollandaise sauce. And it's, um, what's that word they use? Ambiguous? Something more on the fatty, it's on the fatty, like it is a little more on the fatty side of the crab. Okay. Along with a lemongrass and ginger aioli, then I'm adding a carbonero based sauce with white soy, yuzu, and Calabrian chili. I've never had sea bass before, so I'm a little nervous. But like I said, it's about adventure and learning. <laughs> pretty easily. Is that the sea bass? Mm -hmm. I like it. It's good. It's yeah. Very buttery, almost like a like a lobster. Like a lobster. Like a lobster. I usually don't like fish. Mm -hmm. Of course, this evening we have coming up with pasta. It was produced using something that looks like a dowel rod with a wooden block. Similar to the process of making gnocchi, or that is making the pasta and rolling it across the wooden block, allowing the grooves to form in the garganelli. It has been dressed in a cauliflower puree. You're going to find some romanesco and cauliflower along with it. And then we have Santa Barbara uni. So you have the raw piece along the top, along with the sea butter finishing the pasta. We still get cured in the style of a batargo with some yuzu and chili, claw brand chili. Over top of the wow. Wow. <laughs> then we have a green puree in the middle that has a base of Castle Valtrana olives, along with broad piece of Sicilian pistachios with Parmesan, burrata, and green garlic. Please enjoy. Thank you so much. It's a charred leaf with some lamb belly bacon and crushed pistachios. Okay, thank you. Okay, pleasure. Personally, I don't think anything is going to live up to that A5 Wagyu at the end. And it's kind of sad because we have to wait to the very end to actually get to it. I've had A5 before in Epcot. And uh, so far, I mean, I really loved uh, the uh, pasta. was really cool. And it's cool that, you know, we heard a little backstory about how it's from Hoboken. And that's where the Roosevelt's team is. The chef, you know, got some inspiration there. And then also the lamb chop. I've never liked lamb before. I've never been a, f like, I've never been a fan of lamb and that was one of the best things I've ever eaten like if you you realize how amazing that is like that's like someone saying they don't like a certain like item and then liking it because of how it was prepared like there's I don't think there's any place on the earth I'm gonna be able to like lamb like I did tonight and that kind of boggles my mind Thank you. So next we have for you French quail breast and aura pan salmon. The salmon has been pan seared. While the quail was dry aged with something called shiokoji. So shiokoji is a fermented rice product that is used in the preparation of making sake. So it gives a little extra umami to the dish before being dry aged and grilled over Japanese bicho pan tar. Now on the side for everyone, we have some sunflower seeds. So Chef Gabriella wanted to produce something that gave you the feeling and texture of risotto, but didn't leave you feeling full and heavy afterwards. So she's taken the sunflower seeds and pressure cooked them with a sunflower, or I'm sorry, a sun choke and mascarpone cheese puree, finishing with crispy sun choke chips with mustard greens and paragord black truffles. First time. Butter and wagyu renderings. Underneath of the rice patty, you're going to find 
some sauteed hedgehog mushrooms along with braised oxtail. We are then finishing the rice patty with onion jam, crispy onions, and a house prepared for a cup. I didn't know if you were going to end with hedgehogs. Hedgehog. 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 We're eating the Sonic. Thank you. Ready to eat your hedgehog? Yes. An A5. 81 point score of Kobe really State. My knife to cut oh, wow. I'm not going to lie. Oh, my goodness. That's good. Let's get another one. Let's get another one. Well, you might get six. I didn't mean to make that stain. I'm one number six. Wow. Oh my lord. I did, I ran out, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I accept the sticker. <laughs> I guess we're done. I think we acclimate your palate from the savory to the sweet. This looks like a beautiful And so I will wish you all uh, a little belated but a very happy foster love. Fastelaven is the celebration, uh, very similar uh, to a Mardi Gras, but uh, in the in the Nordic countries. So this uh, the holiday happens on the Sunday before Ash Wednesday, and as opposed to wandering around a French quarter drinking tons of hurricanes, uh, the people of specifically Denmark will actually travel to all of the bakeries in their town. Each bakery will have created a different kind of ball for the Fastelaven Festival. And so this is technically a Fastelaven Bowler. And so our Fastelaven Bowler is based on the idea of uh, pretzels and beer. So we take a pas de choux, a pastry, uh, we then uh, cut it in half and fill it with a caramel sauce that's made with milk stout beer, pretzel ice cream, and malted corn flakes with a little bit of 23 karat gold leaf powder. So it's meant almost as a little ice cream sandwich and uh, let me tell you, uh, I, I hope you enjoy it because I know you will. Oh boy. to welcome you, we will conclude this evening with some bites to say good night, say thank you for joining us, and just enjoy some last thank you. Uh, beautiful flavors here, of our, courtesy of our pastry team. Oh, they look amazing. So I'll place these here. Are those little mandolines? So we'll start there, if you like, uh, on top of the high pedestal. Uh, this, so these are technically what um, our pastry team will do is they go more by like our true season. So our winter, we had our holiday desserts, but then we had our winter desserts premiere on the winter solstice around December 21st, 22nd. And so that was, of course, the first day of our uh, snowflake and a citrus wonderland, which was our dessert that you just enjoyed. And now we move, of course, into our winter friandies. Now, as I said, on the elevated plate, uh, I'm sure you're all familiar of how important gingerbread is uh, to us here at the Grand Floridian during the holidays and during our winter. So this is our uh, gingerbread madeleine uh, to, uh, uh, for you to enjoy. As we move to the small plate in front of you, uh, this is our take on a raspberry bake well. If you're... 
dinner was amazing and now I think we're gonna head home and I'm gonna give you a little recap and let you guys know everything my thoughts and kind of break it down a little bit more detailed well I don't even know how detailed I can get but I liked it a lot I was going to bring you back some of that A5 Wagyu, but they only gave me enough for uh, one or two bites. So here's a nice little cookie for you. Whoop. And she also has a pizza pad. You can't grab it. <laughs> what are you doing? Here, you want me to break it? Oh, there you go. She has a little pizza pad. You put all this little, uh, little cookies inside here, and then she has to find it. Or you put them over here, too. I had a piece there. Yeah, little little pads right there, bada boom. Yeah, good stuff. And with that, we are done here tonight. Um, I'm all dressed down now, back at home. Uh, I wanted to close out the video and give you like my final thoughts on everything because really can't go into it much while you're in there. I thought it was everything and more than everything I expected. Like I thought it was such fun and amazing atmosphere. I thought it was going to be stiff, you know, uncomfortable. But uh, I mean, most of the wait staff and uh, the... Uh, uh, chefs and like everyone was just kind of warm and welcoming and uh, like I enjoyed my overall experience I thought it was so fun uh, being adventurous and trying foods that I've you know never even had an interest in trying before but getting a great opportunity where you can see a team of people putting together a very small portion of food and it makes you you know kind of respect it a little bit more so you know what I mean uh, and and you kind of feel like, oh, okay, well, if I'm not, you know, that big into this type of thing, if I'm going to try it, I'm going to try it at a very good moment. And you can't ask for a better moment than that. And some of the things I absolutely loved, like the sea bass was great. And uh, the A5, I loved. It was so good. I mean, <laughs> they only give you a little bit, though. They can't give you a lot. Obviously, it's very, very expensive. Uh, the uh, the lamb, I, I thought I never would like, like lamb, like I talked about it. Uh, a lot of the things were very cool. And I know I didn't show much of it in the video because, like I said, it's not like I could just break it down into like a little like small food review. I knew I wanted to kind of just show you and have uh, – it was great because uh, – the uh, wait staff that was taking care of us, they were kind of talking about each of the items. And I was like, oh, well, they can probably describe it a lot better than I would ever be able to. So I kind of left that in and just went with the flow of like the evening. And it ended up being amazing. Uh, we were there for, holy moly, I'd say we got there around 5-ish. And we left around 11 p.m. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, when I first got there, uh, the original dining room menu, it was like two ninety five, and then they gave us the option to upgrade to the chef's table menu. After we went in the kitchen, we got to meet the chef, and uh, I was so pumped after that. I was like, I'm doing it. Uh, so it ended up being at three ninety five, almost four hundred. Uh, and uh, of course, I bought some drinks. You know, I bought uh, an old fashioned stuff. So. Uh, just around $500 a person. Like I said, if you end up going as a couple, it's safe to say you'll spend around $1,000 uh, per person. Uh, just because if you plan on having drinks or any pairings or anything like that. But if you're really tight and you're just going to go straight like still water, you could probably get it for about $300, you know, $350 a person. Like, uh, and then you also have gratuity and tax that you have to add into. And, uh, you know, the staff there is beyond exceptional. We, uh, you know, left great, you know, gratuity for them because honestly, it's an art form. And they only have one table most of the night. Like that whole entire restaurant revolves around you. The whole entire restaurant. There's only like 12, pe 12 other tables in the restaurant. And they're not like getting up and leaving and like going. Like other tables are coming in. Like we're here and we're there for like several hours. So you got to make sure you take care of them because it was like I felt so amazing. And like I said, even if, you know. A lot of people now, that's like probably the most expensive dinner I've ever bought. And like I said, I definitely will remember this as a night of memorable moments. I had a great time and it was amazing, you know, trying something unique. I would definitely do it again. I could tell you I've had, you know, fun times, some, you know, nights, you know, at concerts or sporting events or even at bars where you spend a lot of money that you don't, you can't even remember. You know what I mean? So like a lot of people be like, oh, it's very expensive. If you're into 
creating a great moment, like some great, you know, memories of food and cuisine. This is definitely worth it. And you know what? It's just hard to get a reservation. Like, <laughs> and the place, uh, you know, exceeded all expectations for me on a level of experience. Uh, and uh, just like I said, being able to create a great memory like that. I'll never forget it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.